Grace and peace, everybody. Blessings to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Apostle Richard E. Youngblood, also known as Apostle YB. I welcome those of you who are coming in the room live on today. Good to see you as you come in. May God just meet you and greet you as you come through the door onto our broadcast today. Uh, I have a word that I want to share with you. I believe it will bless you, encourage you, and bring some clarity even to some of what you are currently facing. And I'm excited. I don't know how to really contain myself. Um, just excited about what God is doing and to be able to be a part of that which he is doing. Uh, it's just exciting. Um, so um, hopefully you are equally as excited as I am that um, God is moving, he's moving, and that you are connecting yourself to the movement that is going on concerning you and what God has promised. Amen. Uh, I see some of you all who are excited that we're on two days in a row. Um, it's good to be able to come and hang out with you all. Um, I'm grateful, glad to be on. Um, in just a moment, we're going to greet, we're going to pray, and then I'm going to greet those of you who are on live, and we're just going to get into the word on today. This word is going to somewhat correlate with what the Lord gave us on yesterday um, concerning the ending of delay. Um, and, um, I believe that today he'll give us a little more instruction, um, um, concerning what it is he's going to do. Let's pray. And then let's greet you all and get into the word. Thank you so much, father, for this time. Thank you for these, your people. Thank you for the plan that you have, that you are exercising in our lives. Thank you, Father, that by faith on today, we are possessing the promise. Father, I also uh, thank you today that in areas where we are not able to lay hand on or claim what you have said about us, you're going to do it by your own supernatural authority and power. I bless you on today that you are a God that works miracles. I anticipate and expect you to do exactly that on today. Father, throw your weight around in our lives. Do big things, do great things, do the exceeding abundantly and above. We give you room to do it. We expect it. We anticipate it. We are excitedly anticipating and we praise you in advance because we know that praise is the way that we show how much we value who you are. So Lord, do what you promised. We give you complete control in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, let's see who we have in the room, in the house today. Hi, Krista. Krista was the first one in on today that I could see uh, on the live. Great to have you with us, Krista. Blessings to you. There's my friend, Retta. How are you, Retta? Good to see you. Bless you. Yeah, two days in a row, right? That's a little, I think, I think it's more unique for you to be able to be on two days in a row than it is for me but I'm glad to see you. Hi, Linda. Um, thank you so much, Linda. You, you are incredible. I love you. Blessings and shalom to you. Carmelitha, always good to see you. Part of family. 
Uh, I bless you. I thank God for you being on on today. Hi, Anna. Good morning. I think I'm in the afternoon here. Blessings to you. So glad that you're on today. Good to see you. Hadn't seen you in a while. I live for God Almighty. Blessings to you. I thank you. Uh, I read your message. Um, thanks for being on. Thank you for the update. Hi, Cynthia. Blessings to you. Uh, may God continue doing what he's doing in your life. May you be encouraged supernaturally concerning the things that God has been saying to you in Jesus' name. Um, good morning, Facebook user. Um, grace and shalom to you. Didn't see your name, so um, forgive me for not saying your name. Hi, child. You just logged on to see my face. Here it is. Same dad. Even though I'm getting closer to 60, I still look like I'm 59. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Hi, T.L. Walker. Always good to see you. You know that you are loved and appreciated. If you don't, I'm telling you now, Joel, likewise, love you and appreciate you. Thank God for your continued support of our ministry and vision. Yvonne, Yvonne, I thank God for you. So good to have you on as always. Always good to see you. You're a blessing. Such an encouraging encouragement in my life. Hey, Carol, blessings to you. So good to see you on today. I thank God for you. Apostle Woodruff, Apostle, I'm going to, um, I may as well share it with you now, uh, and maybe I'll, I'll follow up with a phone call. Um, I received a prophecy a couple of days ago with you in the prophecy, um, and the word of the Lord was talking about how he was going to use the two of us to do something fantastic and phenomenal in the city of Atlanta as it relates to revival in Atlanta. I'm, I'm going to give you a call I'm, um, maybe this evening. I know you're probably taking a pause from work just to say hello, and I appreciate you. Um, but I want to share that word with you. I think it'll encourage you. Hey, Greta. Greta, so good to see you. I pray all is well. Uh, every time I see Greta's name, it blesses me, you all. That's like my... One of one of the first miracles of our ministry, Greta. Um, she reminds me of how God can break generational curses. I believe when she came to our ministry, she was a young lady, and um, there was a track record in her family where people didn't live past a certain age, and so the enemy had laden her down with fear that she wasn't going to make it past that age either. Um, but she did. And, and boy, did her life just take off like a rocket. Supernaturally, God has just been blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing. Now she has her own family, her own business, really proud of what God is doing with her. There's Russell. Good to see you. Blessings to you. Glad you're on. Thanks for being here, bro. Um, um, let's see here. I see you, Shasha. Always good to see you. Uh, thank God for you. And all of those of you who are sending me love, thank you so much. Those of you who are um, being thankful for my life and for me, I appreciate it. Um, before we get into the teaching, of course, as I said, you all know this is my birthday weekend. I'm going to be turning the big six zero on Sunday. Um, and um, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm content. I thank God for um, experience and prayerfully also for maturity for what he is doing and um, that I'm here to experience what he's doing and to see him doing it and to partner with those of you who are here um, in this season and time as we do what God anointed and called us to do. What a blessing it is. Amen. Amen. I want to, uh, if you did not, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, Greta. 
Now, Greta's almost 50. I, I promise you, it seemed like it was 20. I know it was over 20 years ago. Um, and I think maybe the fear was that she wouldn't turn 30, that she wouldn't get past 30 years old and look at God. Look at God. God is amazing. You hear me? He's amazing. T Fields, blessings to you. You made it in in time for me to speak. I'm glad to see you. All right, listen. So first of all, please, um, if you are on and you can share, um, share, invite somebody, type their name. If you're on Facebook, type their name in the status bar so that they'll know to come on because there are some people who need to hear what God is getting ready to do in their lives to interrupt the delay that they've been dealing with or to interrupt even uh, where it looks like things are going in the wrong or a negative direction. Um, why don't you summons them in so they can get a word on today. All right. So yeah, as I was saying, this is my birthday weekend. Thank you all so much. Those of you who have already reached out to me, some of you all been wishing me a happy birthday um, way before it was my birthday. Um, and I appreciate it. Some of you all started off at the beginning of the month. Uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, your love for me with me. Um, I'm grateful that there are people who aren't afraid to appreciate other people who, who don't feel like that's, it doesn't threaten you, you know, um, to be appreciative of other people, other gifts that God has put in the earth. And so I'm just excited and grateful and thankful that I'm here. Um, I have the use and activities of my limbs. I'm healthy. Uh, all those things are blessings. But I also want to particularly appreciate those of you who have taken it upon yourself, uh, yourselves to partner with me and our ministry. Some of you, uh, every month, there's a seed that comes into our ministry in your name. And while we may not get the opportunity to interact on a one-to-one -one or a personal basis, I want to make sure that you know how valuable you are, how important it is that we have people who love us enough to help us do what it is that we are doing. Um, and boy, uh, you make it um, you make us want to do it. That's, that's what I'll say. You make it, uh, even though, and, and, and those of you who are in ministry can attest to this ministry is challenging. Ministry is challenging to you physically. It's challenging to your family. It can challenge your marriage. It can challenge you in any, in every area. And there are points and times when you are the sole supporter, uh, financially of the ministry. There are times when you can find yourself in that position. I've had to function in that position a time or two in my life. So having partners that help lift the burden off of my shoulders and um, help us to do it with excellence, I really want to appreciate it. I want to start out also, though, today by uh, saying to those of you who want to help us do what we do, but you don't have the financial wherewithal uh, to do so. But if you have some level of gifting and you look at our ministry and you see a place or space where you can help us make it more excellent, if you are good with editing videos, if you understand social media, uh, if you listen, if you are watching me, you know that I'm really not the social media uh, person. I, I know that there are other platforms and I know that those platforms uh, have great influence. There are people who are now influencers because of what they're doing on social media. Um, I'm that's not my oil. My oil doesn't flow in that area. I'm doing what I'm anointed to do. But there are some of you who may have a, a, an anointing and a plan where you can see how you can help us take this aspect of our ministry to another level of excellence. I welcome you to send me an email and let us know 
that you want to help us do that. Uh, I see you um, live for God. We do have, uh, I am currently working on a TikTok presence. Uh, we're going to do something completely different. Um, not completely different in the sense of it's not already being done, but it's not going to be like what we get here uh, on TikTok. Um, on TikTok, we're going to just do a whole lot of talking about love. Uh, we started a new, um, We ha I, 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 I have a new business. It's not necessarily a business, um, but there's an idea that we are um, putting together called Love Out Loud. And uh, we're going to begin to encourage uh, God's people and build you in God's love, but also uh, encourage you to love one another, to support one another, to not, you know, because someone else is doing it and they're doing it well, we don't have to take a disposition negatively about that. Um, we can just simply appreciate them and support them in the best way we can. So we have some things that we're trying to do, but listen, uh, I'm, I'm going to stay in my lane. Now, this is something that it took me a lot of years to learn. Um, you know, the, the, the pastor is not meant to be the jack of all trades, uh, that's not, and 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 I think that sometimes we take that, especially as apostles or how people view apostles, that that means that we can do all the things in the church. That's not what it means. I stay in my lane, but there are some of you who can help us become more excellent at what we're doing. I'm I'm asking you to shoot me an email, um, tell me what it is that you want to offer and that you can help us do, and please don't be shy. Um, that there is no such thing as uh, a dumb offer. If you see something that you thought you, that you think can help, give it to us. All right. So my, you know my email address by now, but if you don't, it's apostle yb at gmail, and um, send send those things to us, and let's work together. All right. Let's let's build kingdom together. Okay. So now on yesterday uh, we talked about the the ending of delays how god was going to bring the delays to an end so on yesterday as i finished the lord began to speak to me about one thing that i want to deal with first and then we'll get into this divine interruption um the lord began to share with me yesterday and again some this morning well uh let's not get too deep let's not get too deep um um, I think sometimes we, we say the Lord is doing something when really our spirit can just gravitate to certain things. So um, uh, yesterday and then again this morning, what fell into my heart was um, Miriam, how um, Miriam spoke against God's leadership. She spoke against Moses and there are two very important things that I want you to get from what happened. Miriam spoke against God's leadership or God's authority. Two things happened. Number one, Miriam was smitten with a disease. She was smitten with a disease that would literally have eventually killed her. Number two, her disobedience delayed everybody. It slowed down the entire tribe of Israel. Everybody had to stop walking. Everybody's progress was held back. I want to say this, and I want this to really sink into your hearts. Be careful, be careful, especially in this um type of, of Christian, uh, Christian atmosphere that's being built now. Everybody has a platform where they can go watch somebody judge or expose someone else who's in leadership. And I believe that there are people who love watching other people's lives fall apart. And we love listening to the people who help pull those lives apart. I want to warn you that there is sickness and disease and delay connected 
to speaking against those whom the Lord has chosen, even, and watch this, even if those who he has chosen have gone the wrong way. Moses said that there would be no marriage outside of the nation of Israel. Everybody who was going to get married in Israel had to marry somebody that was also from Israel or out of Israel. And then he himself married a woman who was African. He married a black woman. And so when Miriam saw this, Miriam went into judgment concerning him. Now, I want you to catch this. This is another thing that we have to be careful of. And I'm going to get into this teaching today because um, I believe it's important. But I want to make sure we put the bow right here. Um, I think it uh, when, when a person who is in a high position of leadership or visibility falls, it's so much easier to attack them because they fall from a higher position. They fall more publicly. It impacts more people. Well, I want you to also understand that behind the fall of great men and women of God is a strategy that the devil hopes you do not see so that you will cooperate with the demonic strategy. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says if you smite the shepherd, the sheep scatter. So what the enemy understands is he doesn't have to fight you. He doesn't have to fight your neighbor. He doesn't have to fight your marriage. He'll fight your leader. He'll fight someone who's in authority, who if he knocks them down, the, 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 the domino effect of that will hit you too. You ever notice this, that when certain types of leaders fall in the church, People in the world say everybody in the church is that way. You and I could fall or fail and they would never say anything because we're small. So learn how to cover, learn how to undergird, or if you cannot cover or undergird, keep your mouth closed. Now I say that because one of the things that also fell into my spirit this morning is there's going to be some falling. There's going to be some falling because God is reconstructing some things inside the body. So there's going to be some people who are going to fall. When it happens, don't celebrate. Don't expose. Don't go to those YouTube channels that are going to tell you all of the juicy things about how they fail and when it happened in this person's name and that person's name. Be careful because that person who's exposing will be pulling you into delay, pulling you into disease. Everybody stopped moving because Miriam attacked Moses. Be careful. Okay. That's the warning that I heard uh, and I wanted to make sure we share. Okay, so I see those of you who have come on, some more of you who come on. I see Apostle uh, Sean Smith. Listen, uh, I don't know if he minds. I hope he doesn't mind. Um, but this evening, I'm going to be with him. And this is something that I find, uh, um, I, I love this, but this evening I'm going to be with him uh, via Google Meet. We are doing, uh, I'm going on his Bible study and it's called Thirsty Thursday. And um, today or this evening, uh, I believe we're on at seven. Um, we are dealing with spiritual warfare. Okay. And um, those of you all who understand the type of ministry I have, what I try to do is I try to break my teachings down to a level where everybody can get it. OK, because what good is it if I give you uh, something that you don't even understand? You can't use it, even though you're responsible for the information. But if you can't use it, it's not um, something that is good for you. So that's the subject that we're going to be dealing with on tonight, how to fight and win spiritual warfare. I'm excited about being with him uh, he is a, a longtime friend. Uh, we met years and years and years. I don't want to go too many years ago um, because oh, I don't mind you all knowing I'm 60. No, he's nowhere near 60, you all. <laughs> and I love him. I love him. I love him. Um, 
We we met in uh, Columbus, Ohio years ago. Um, I was there in revival at a church that he was a part of at the time before the Lord has now moved him to Florida and promoted him. <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> ain't nobody ask you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's my man. You know, sometimes, listen, listen, um, listen, I want to, um, <laughs> I, I hope you all have friends in the body of Christ. And I hope you have friends that know you're a human being. That's, that's so important. That's so important. So, so he and I can laugh and uh, he, he knows um, I mean it all in love. Love, face, peace, blessing, ministries. Let's see. Thank you for sharing the, that. I saw someone exposing the person last night without telling who, but left me with a bad taste in my mouth. I pray this answered it to a degree. Listen, um, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing, you all. Um, until you can see me as connected to you, then you don't think that my story is connected to your story. You don't know just how much it is connected. So we got to be very, very careful. All right. Okay. So let's get into the teaching. I'm going to answer all the questions. I see you, Lisa. I'll answer your question um, when we get uh, through this teaching. Okay. So the some of us have been um, in a place of delay. Boy, I got so much I want to give to you all today. Help me get clear, Holy Spirit. Some of us have been in um, places where we've been delayed and there are things that you've been trying to do that have not worked. And so it becomes frustrating. Uh, I could talk to you all forever about provision. Um, excuse me. One of the things that I want to, however, deal with you, make sure that you understand as it relates to provision, because I believe that there are many, many, many visionaries that God has allowed um, to assemble around my ministry. And many, many visionaries can feel frustration because you don't have provision. You don't have what's necessary to birth out what God has put in you. And we're going to deal with time in just a moment. But many of you, the issue is just that you need provision and you've looked at it and you said, if I had more finances, if I had the provision. Well, I want you to catch how this thing really, really, really works. Okay. Um, in the book of Habakkuk, and I'm going to read two uh, scriptures out of Habakkuk. Hopefully, these scriptures will help set the foundation for which we're going to deal with tonight. Today, um, tonight we'll be talking about something else. All right. Um, now, listen to this. In the second chapter, verse one, I will stand up on my watch. I will set me up on the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered and said, write the vision. Here is how God sets you up for provision. Okay, I, I, we're going to get to something that's going to be so important because I, to, today there, there's several things I want to deal with, okay? Listen, I don't want every person who sits at the feet of my ministry to think that you're called to be an apostle or called to be a bishop or called to be a pastor or called to be an evangelist or even called to church. Listen, I believe that some of you are called to the marketplace. Some of you are called to business. Some of you are, of you are called to education. Some of you might even be called to science and discovery. And, and, and so God might be building things like that in you. When you sit 
under the anointing of an apostle, our assignment is simple. I do want to make sure you have biblical foundation in what it is that God wants you to do as it relates to your soul's connection to him. But my assignment on top of that is to activate what God has put in you. So this, this message for, for the intent and purpose in which it is being given to you is not just for your Christian life. It is not just for your church. It is not just for your connection to God. It is also your connection, it is to connect today to your connection, to your responsibility, to what God has deposited in you. So the very first thing that unleashes, unleashes uh, um, provision is when you have a vision and you write it. Now, I'm going to say this to you because this is important, because we're going to get to the divine interruption in just a moment, show you how this works. When you write the vision and you make it plain, this is what I'm going to tell you happens. When you first get the vision, it looks nothing like the end. So what's going to happen is when you write it, you're going to notice that you edit it. And you add something and you take something away and you see who fits where and you keep making it as simple as you can. You simplify the vision. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the things that's so important and, 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 and I don't want to jump ahead. But one of the things that's so important, if you're going to get the kind of move God has for you, you can't be deep with what it is you're going to be doing. You got to simplify. You got to oversimplify it. Don't try to feed a thousand people. Figure out how you're going to feed the first person. You understand? Make it simple. Break it down as much as you can. But then he says, uh, after you make it plain, he says, write it up on tables uh, so they that run can read it. King James says, so that he may run that readeth it. But what's really being said here in the actual original text is he's telling him, then hold that sign up. Have you all ever seen a person who goes to the football game and their team is playing and they'll make a sign that says, go number 34 or what have you? What he's literally saying is, I want you to do that. Make your vision plain and then write it big enough so that everybody who's running by can get it and be encouraged by it. So at some point, your vision has to get to a place where you're comfortable with other people seeing it, talking about it, uh, judging it. You, you can't give up on vision because somebody didn't like it. I, I hope you're hearing me because this is this is so good as, as the foundation of what God is getting ready to do for you. You cannot uh, get upset because your vision is under scrutiny. Let it get scrutinized. Scrutiny strengthens the foundation upon which you write that vision. You hear me? Okay. But here's the point that I want to get to. This is about the provision part. Verse three says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Here is why God, it feels, has been keeping you from progress. Now, one of the things that the Lord uh, placed in my heart yesterday, I didn't get to this in the teaching, but God is all about progress and the devil is all about delay. So what happens is you could think that something is being delayed when all God is doing is setting the timing correctly. It's not time. This, this is probably one of the most difficult challenges I've faced in my life where God gave me something and I thought that the time that he gave it to me was the time that it was going to also happen. Some of you all have been there, right? God will give you something and it feels like this is a right now word. This is a right now move. You can even see the space that it's going to fit in. 
but it doesn't work. You keep trying it and trying it and trying it, and it does not work. It is not because you are being delayed. It is not because the devil is engaged. It is because your vision has an appointed time. I need you to say that. You don't have to type it, but I need you to say that my vision has an appointed time. Because if you don't know that your vision has an appointed time, you'll be sitting in a moment right now frustrated with how long you've been trying to get your vision off the ground. But if you wrote it, if you made it plain, and if you have boasted in it, look, y'all, this is what the Lord said he's going to do. There's no reason for you to be upset because all that now has to happen is the date that God has settled in heaven. That would be the date inside of time for your vision to do what God intended to do. It will happen. Now, uh, what, he, what, he, that, what he then says is, it's, it's for an appointed time, but at the end, it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, that word tarry means wait. Though it wait, wait for it. <laughs> Some of you all are right now in my vision is in waiting. It's waiting. It, it, it's waiting for the right moment. It's waiting for the right time. And so this is what I need you to understand. What God is setting up now, men and women, God is setting you up now where he had you get this vision early. Because God knew America was going to do some things. He knew the church in America was going to do some things. He knew that Asia was going to do some things. He knew that Africa was going to do some things. He knew that marriages were going to do some things. He knew that the financial realm was going to do some things. And you, better hear me, you are going to be God's divine interruption. Yeah, your your vision is going to interrupt. I hope you all are catching this because, see, sometimes the reason why it takes us so long to get the momentum that we need is because our appointed time has not come up yet. But when the appointed time comes, what happens is then the vision starts speaking. The vision becomes God's divine interruption. I'm here to tell somebody that you've got to get this in your mind. You got to get this in your heart. You got to get this in your spirit. When 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 heaven uh, uh, presents or introduces Jesus to us, we got to also see Jesus was a divine interruption. Jesus stopped sin from doing what sin was doing. The Bible said that sin reigned. From Adam to Moses, even the people who didn't sin like what Adam did, but sin reigned, death reigned on all of them. But Jesus came as a divine interruption, but he came at the appointed time. All right. Some of you all, you're not in a struggle. No, the calendar just hasn't caught up yet. The, 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 the dilemmas just haven't happened yet. And then some of you all are in that space because your appointed time already came up. So you're already moving into a certain level in a certain realm. You're catching momentum because your time happened. All right. But everybody has to understand that their time is coming. Now we're going to deal with that in just a moment. We're going to get back to that time thing in just a moment. Something that the Lord showed me that I believe is important. Okay, the next scripture uh, in Habakkuk is uh, chapter three, uh, verse number two says, O Lord, I have heard thy speech. I'm as we read here. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, listen, revive thy work in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Now, what Habakkuk is literally asking for here is a divine interruption. Habakkuk is saying things are going the wrong way. Things are dead. Things have not done what I anticipated or expected them to do. But what he's saying is, Lord, revive your work 
in the middle of the year. I Nothing is supposed to happen in the middle of a year. Every person who has a vision, uh, in their vision, they have a fiscal year. And nobody's fiscal year is in the middle of the year. But what Habakkuk is saying is, Lord, interrupt the year by stirring us again and bringing your work back to life in the midst of the year. I want somebody to get this because I believe that you have you have gotten yourself in this process of thinking where you think that God has a work that he wants you to do and it's the work that's going to bring progress and blessing to people. I want you to understand that God does not separate you from your work. Please hear me and hear me clearly. There, you're, it's not going to just be your work. Your presence is also powerful. So Jesus, yes, he dies on the cross. Yes, he works miracles, but his presence inside of time was also an interruption. I want to tell somebody today that you have not placed enough value on your own presence. And because you don't have enough value placed on your own presence, you don't know what you're actually here to do. You think that something from your past has stopped it, and you are looking with the hope of something in your future to stir it back up. But I'm here to tell you that God has a work that he's working because of you or 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 your presence is a sign that this thing is going to happen. So he says, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the year. Make known. Do something that interrupts my year. Blow my mind in August. Somebody will get that. Now, so when God when God prepares you for a divine interruption, there's certain things that you've got to get in your heart as it relates to uh, how you view what's going on. So the Lord said something to me um, about myself, and this has been I don't know how long ago now, um, and I didn't I didn't really. Um, I didn't notice it about myself till the Lord pointed it out. And some of you all are probably this way too. So I'm going to point it out to you. One of the gifts that God has given to me, I had a friend um, ask me this on yesterday. Um, she says, uh, are you excited about your birthday? I think she's on here she, or she was. She said, are you excited about your birthday? And, um, you know, you're excited you know, about that. And, and I said, well, no, not really. I said, because my birthday is Sunday. And Today is Wednesday, and I'm staying in Wednesday. I, I'm not going to miss Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday because I'm waiting on, do, do y'all hear me? So what the Lord said to me is there's a gift in being able to stay present. This is something that you got to master. And this is this is probably the most challenging part of this message that I'm going to give to you all today. Being able to stay in the moment that you're in is a challenge because your past wants you to live in it. Your future wants you to feel like you're behind because of it. And so you spend no time in the mean time. I know there's an appointed time. But but what you've got to learn how to master is the meantime. What do you do now? What do you do when it's not working, when it's not happening, when you did have an issue, when you do have some problems, when you do have challenges? And so what happens is we've got, and especially, especially people who have had trauma. Listen to me. If you've had trauma in your past, the trauma is not just there so you could be wounded. The trauma is there so that you will not be present. You better hear me. The trauma, oh, glory to God. The trauma is introduced to you so that you will live in the bedroom where the trauma happened, so that you live in the bloodline where it happened, so that you live 
in the narrative where it happened so that you will live on the couch talking to somebody about something that happened to you 12 years ago. Now, listen, I'm not trying to tell you to quit counsel. If you need counsel, get counsel. But what I am trying to tell you is those things happen to you so that you will not be present. And then there are those of you who are visionaries, right? And you want the vision to come to pass, but because the vision is for an appointed time, the vision will have you looking in the future. And while you're looking in the future, you're missing so many moments that God is trying to set you up for now. I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. There is nothing that God is trying to do for you tomorrow. You better hear me. Everything that God wants to do for you, he wants to do it in a present. The, the, the Bible says he's a present help. He's not trying to help you tomorrow. He's not trying to help you yesterday. He's trying to help you now. So what happens is we've got to learn how to push out of our uh, our minds what happened yesterday. Yesterday is behind you. Forget it. You got to learn how to see what's going on ahead of you, and maybe you can prepare for it. But the moment I refuse to miss, oh my God, is the moment I'm in now. Watch this. Listen to me closely now. In Mark chapter number five, verse number 25, and we're going to move a little fast here now. Uh, in Mark chapter 5, verse number 25, we are told of the story of a woman who had an issue of blood. And she had this issue of blood for 12 years. In the story, we understand that she not only had the issue of blood for 12 years, but she had gone to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. She went to people who should have made her better, but they made her worse. This woman is suffering from not only disease in her body, but she's also suffering trauma. These people were telling her remedies that did not work. She would get her hope up. Imagine this. Somebody told her that if you dig a hole and put these herbs in and sit over the hole, it will heal you. Imagine her digging a hole, putting the herbs in the ground, sitting over the hole, and people watching her knowing that she's the lady who's been bleeding around town, and nothing happened. As a matter of fact, the Bible says she got no better Better, she got worse. Now, here is what trauma wants to do. Trauma wants you to be so bad and be hurt so deeply that on the day that Jesus is passing by, you still visiting doctors. You still mad at the person who told you to sit over the hole with the herbs in it. You still upset at the person who dropped you, stabbed you in the back. And, and because you living in your past, you miss your encounter that's in your present. I'm here to tell you that the divine interruption of God is not trying to happen to you next year. It's not trying to happen to you next month. It's trying to happen to you now. You've got to get present. The Bible tells us again in Luke chapter 13, verse number 11, another woman who had the spirit of infirmity. The spirit of infirmity had her bent over for 18 years. Those 18 years kept her bent over. But you know what? I may be bent over, but when I get to my moment, I've got to be ready to stand up. I don't know what's going on in your personal life. This, we don't have time to even talk about it. You know what I'm saying? But what I do want you to understand is whatever it was can end today if you get in this moment. In this moment, anything can happen. It's a divine interruption. Habakkuk said, blow up the middle of this year. Do something at a time nobody's expecting. You got to stay current. We also know in John 9, the man that was born blind, I don't have time, the man at the pool who was there 38 years and how the Lord came and snatched him out of that situation. But, but the point I want you to get here is this. God says, he tells him when he's talking to Jeremiah, God pulls out his own resume and he says, uh, is there anything, is there anything too hard for me? So here is why the enemy, and when I say the enemy, please don't equate enemy, don't equally, uh, don't equate automatically to the devil, because sometimes the enemy is your lack of being able to discern when you're not in the moment. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to tell you this, I really believe 
that God wants to do something suddenly and immediately. But because most of us don't live in the same space as sudden and immediate, we live in yesterday and tomorrow. What happened to me yesterday and what I'm hoping is going to happen to me tomorrow. There are some people who might be watching me right now. You're not happy with the fact that you got to watch me while you're at work. You're not happy with the moment. You, 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 you're not happy in this space you're in right now. But when does suddenly happen? Does suddenly happen tomorrow? Can suddenly happen yesterday? Suddenly happens to people who are present. People who are available, people who are living in the current moment. So watch this. Watch this. Uh, uh, we all, we all, we all can agree that each of us have a story, and each of us have a story that's got some highlights in it, and, and, and it's got some challenges in it, and 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 you know, some parts of the story might even be similar. But while some of those things in our story might be similar, uh, th there are some people who choose to focus on the highlights of their lives and others who choose to focus on the challenges. I'm going to help somebody now about the Holy Ghost. If you are a person who only focuses on the challenges, then what you're, you'll find yourself overloaded in warfare. Listen, you'll find yourself overloaded in warfare. You, you, you'll be battling all of the time. Every day you wake up, it's already waiting for you. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I woke up, I was already in warfare. It was trouble, Apostle. You don't understand. It, it was like something was just sitting on me when I woke up. It is because if you look at life and all you see is the challenges that you are always seemingly facing, then you don't understand why God gave you vision. Woo, yeah. When you understand why God gave you vision, then you understand he gave me a vision because the vision is the answer. The vision is the answer to the challenge. So what I need to do is I need to live in vision. I need to live in answers. I need to live in the places where there are highlights because watch this. When you live in the place where there are highlights, People who live in the highlights of their life also can give God praise in the challenge. Did you hear me? People who live in the highlights, people who, who don't uh, uh, look at, I bled for 12 years, uh, but they look at, I survived all of that. Yeah, they look at the highlights. People who don't say, man, I was at that pool for 38 years before the Lord came and got me. And they say, you know what? I saw a whole lot of people quit and give up at the same time that I was there. But somehow I survived it. It can't, you can't always think of yourself in terms of difficulties. Somewhere along the line, you have to see your own strength. I'm talking to somebody now. You got to see your own strength. Somewhere along along the line. You got to get in this moment and know that thing was trying to make me miss something today. It was trying to kill me then. So I would not be in this moment I'm in right now. So this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that, that David, David in the Psalm, and I was trying to grab it for you all real quickly. Uh, I don't need to get it because I know exactly what it says here, but, um, uh, whew, Lord, I, I won't read it all, but this is what he says. He says that, um, that when they were in bondage, he says, when we were in bondage, they, they asked us to sing a song. And he said, how can we sing uh, the Lord's song when we're in a strange land? So what they did, they hung their harps up on the willow tree because they were in a dilemma. And when you're in dilemma and you're not in the moment, you don't know that God is worthy of praise even in this moment. Mm, yeah, even in this dilemma, he's worthy of praise. I don't know how long it's going to last. It, it might last another year. I don't know if my mother or father also had to deal with it. It might be generational. But what I do know is I'm in this 
moment. And in this moment, I'm going to give God praise because I am God's divine interruption. You better hear me. Listen, some of you all don't even understand this, but this is what the Bible says. Oh God, let me get this in the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 14. I want you to hear this because there's something I need you to get by the Holy Ghost. Numbers chapter 14, I believe verse 24. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 21, verse 20. And the Lord said, and we're in at we're in Numbers 14. I'm reading out of the King James. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. This was what Moses asked the Lord to do some things. He says, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Now listen, listen, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me now these 10 times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But listen to verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. Let me read out the NLT. But my servant Caleb had a diff has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me. So I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants, better hear me, his descendants will possess theirs, the full share of that land. Listen at what God is saying here. God is saying that everybody had something negative uh, to, to feel or say because of the way that God brought them. Caleb was brought the same way. As a matter of fact, Caleb was only going the way the other people were going because he couldn't convince the people, let's go into the promised land. When? Now. And because they wouldn't go in now, here Caleb is walking around wandering with people who should have already gone in by now. But he never lost, better hear me now, he never lost the right attitude. Let me talk to you about this. See, your attitude is important as it connects to your vision. You got to have the Kind of attitude about your vision that you either will fight for it or you're going to boost it. Either way, you're not giving up on it. You're not going to throw in the towel because this that God has given to you is a divine interruption. It's going to change somebody's life. It's going to turn a family around. It's going to change somebody's finances. It's going to set somebody who's captive free. You cannot give up on it because God put it in you for it to do something dramatic in somebody's life. Do you hear me? So what happens? Caleb is out here wandering with everybody else. It's not his fault, but he's not looking around find, to find anybody who have fought in. He keeps the same attitude. His attitude is, I'm going in. I'm going to get my territory. I'm going to get my blessing. I don't know if, it's, if, it, if it didn't happen yesterday. I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm expecting it to happen today. I'm expecting it right now. Watch this now. So this Bible then tells us something that I believe we need to also garner uh, on today. Listen to this. This is, uh, uh, I, I, I told you I wasn't going to read it. I, I, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip that. All right. Let's go to the next scripture. Hallelujah. Let's go to Isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19. I'm going to read this to you out of the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, forget about what happened. Don't keep going over old history. See, see, see what he's trying to get you to do. What he's trying to get you to do. He's trying to get you to stop processing what happened to you, what happened in the past, how bad it was, because you are meant to be an interruption. So something had to happen. Because you're going to interrupt it. Somebody in your family had to have an issue, had to have sickness, had to have divorces or whatever it was that went on. That had to happen because you are the divine interruption. So first thing I want you to do is stop rehearsing bad memories. Oh my God, listen, when you sit down and you are talking, stop talking about how bad 
a thing was. And I don't know why I see this, but I see some of you now. And please forgive me. I don't have no names for this. And I, I wouldn't tell a name if I did. But I see some of you right now by the Holy Ghost. You're having, you're, you're having a drink. And it's an adult beverage, if I could call it that. It's an adult beverage. And while you're having your adult beverage, the reason why you have your adult beverage is because while having your adult beverage, your mouth is released to talk about how bad things were. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. Some of you all, and listen, I'm not preaching religion right here. If you if you and the Lord have in y'all's relationship, you and the Lord don't... Um, there ain't no bondage on you having a drink. I'm not trying to tie you. But what I do want to say to you is this. Quite possibly, it's the beverage that's got the key that keeps opening up this thing that's keeping you trapped in your past. Maybe that beverage that you're drinking is the reason why you can't get in the now. Because the beverage keeps taking you back and you keep reliving how bad it was and reliving the abuse and reliving the mistreatment and reliving the bondage. Because you there's somehow you get comfort by being able to keep talking about it. I knew they don't like me. I don't like them either. And then there's a trigger. Something will happen and it'll take you back to your past. Listen, every time you rehearse a bad memory, watch this, you bring the bad memory into the season you're in now. Oh, you better catch this. You bring that bad memory into the season that you're in now. So what happens is something that you were supposed to forget because you didn't forget it. You brought it to your now. Now somebody else is there and they have to help you deal with something. They weren't even in your life when it happened. They weren't there. They didn't do it. They didn't say it. They didn't try it. Nothing. But because you rehearse it and because in your mind you ruminate over it, it has brought you to a place where now the bad memories come into your now moment. But I need you to forget about what happened. This is what the word says. Forget about what happened. Listen, forgetting takes more energy than remembering. Listen, let, let, let me get this into your heart because see, uh, this is something I've had to learn to do. You got to learn how to push thoughts out of your mind. You can't just let your mind have every thought that comes to it. I was processing this and let me, let me submit this to you. The Bible says that Jesus was led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And it talks about how he led him here and he led him there and he led him there and he led him there. Do you think that there was a physical being do you think that there was an actual devil that came to Jesus? Because, you know, sometimes what we think is since he's Jesus, his experiences were a little different from ours. And do you think there was an actual demon devil person that was walking with Jesus and talking to Jesus? Or do you think Jesus was experiencing what we experience, where sometimes your thoughts just go the wrong way? And, and and because your thoughts go the wrong way, you own the thought like it's your thought because it's your experience after all. And since it's my experience, I gained or garnered some thoughts from my experiences. I went through the trauma. So this is how I think now. Well, what I notice about Jesus is that Jesus didn't own any of this as if it was his. Everything that Jesus saw or felt or thought, he gave it to the devil and he took the word as his way of defeating the enemy. Notice that the enemy only tempted Jesus in three areas. Three areas that, that, that Jesus was tempted in, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He took him to everything that the world has to offer. And when Jesus denied those things and said, get behind me, Satan, you better hear me. See, sometimes, oh, glory to God. Sometimes things happened in your past so that you will open up your thought process to something satanic, satanic about yourself. I need somebody to hear me. Somebody pray right here because somebody's going to get delivered. See, sometimes what the enemy hopes is what happened to you yesterday will make you think a certain way about yourself today so that today when God wants to do something that will interrupt your life, when he wants to do something powerful that will 
take you to another dimension. Instead of you saying, yes, thank you, you'll be like the man who was at the pool for 38 years and Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? He said, well, I don't have a man who can put me in the water. In other words, he didn't understand that God was talking about, Jesus was talking about right now. He was not talking about what happened to you 38 years or what happened to you 38 times. I'm talking about right now. Do you want it right now? Some of you all don't understand. Those thoughts aren't your thoughts. That's Satan trying to make you feel some way about yourself at your moment. He wants you to feel unworthy. He wants, he hopes that you will somehow feel like you are a victim. And if you are a victim, certainly you can't have any answers. You're the victim. And if he can, he'll elevate the person who hurt you, the person who or people who made you victims. He'll make sure to elevate them and wag them in your face so that you'll be sitting somewhere saying, oh, my, it, I'm, I'm the one left here like this. He wants you to pity yourself. You've got to learn something. And this is something that it took me years to do this. And that's why I'm grateful that God could allow me to just transfer this to you today. You've got to unlearn negative behavior. You got to push it away from you. You got to stop. As soon as that thought comes up in your mind that says everything seems to fall apart from me all, for me all of the time. It seems like as soon as I get right here, things start falling apart. You don't have time to buy that drink and sit with that thought. You got to tell that thought, devil, Satan, I rebuke you. Listen, I want you to understand something. Uh, uh, um, a devil, a devil is really something that is mixed, a mixture, uh, or Satan is really uh, the definition when you dig into it. It really means mixed. It really means the mixture of two things. So, so, so what God is trying to do is God is trying to elevate and bless you, but your memory is trying to bleed in and mix. That's why what, what the devil did in the Garden of Eden, what Satan did in the Garden of Eden was he mixed information. You ain't hearing me. He mixed some information. And so notice what when, when God uh, began to talk to Adam and ask him, where are you? The, the, the conversation went to a place where God said, who told you? In other words, where did you get this information that you now have? Because this information is messing you up and you in a now moment and you, somebody told you something in your past that's messing you up. Listen, you got to unlearn every negative thing that you have thought about yourself. You got to unlearn it. It takes effort. You better hear me. It takes effort. You got to stay alert. That's what he says. Let me read that scripture all the way. He said, forget about what happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. You got to stay alert. When those thoughts come up, you got to replace them. You can't let them sit there. You can't examine them. You can't wonder where they came from. You can't say, oh my God, I can't believe it. I don't have time to be in amazement with these thoughts. I'm pulling them down. I'm getting rid of them. I'm going to unlearn what people thought about me. I'm going to unlearn that negative voice that speaks to me. I'm going to unlearn it because I'm going to tell myself something different. I'm going to be alert. I'm going to stay present. There's no way I'm going to let you. Something that happened to me 20 years ago, keep me living in it 20 years later. Oh no, I've got to be alert because something is trying to happen with me and for me right now. It's a divine interruption. So he says, be present. And this is what he says about that. After that, I'm about to do something brand new. You cannot miss this thing. Listen to me, believers, do not miss this. Stay alert, be present, live in this moment. Stop rehearsing old stories. Stop. Listen, I grew up in an organization. I just see one of my friends who grew up in the same fellowship and organization as kids. And if you're not careful, what will happen is you'll grow up in something and, and, and then you'll see what they're doing now. And you'll you'll be looking at what you grew up in and, and you'll make a trophy or a memorial out of it. Wow. Nobody's doing it like we these young people don't have it like we 
You know what? They may not be doing it like we did it because they don't they have a whole different level of issues and dilemmas that we didn't face because our parents made us go to church, made us sit in the front row, made us tear for the Holy Ghost. They made sure we were there and maybe they were raised in a different situation. So I'm not going to compare mine to yours. And mine's better. But what I also know is there's some things that I learned growing up that I had to unlearn because I what I learned growing up somehow they gave you this concept that that if you live right, heaven belongs to you. And so that's kind of confusing because I know some people who live better than Christians, but that don't mean that they're going to heaven. What we have to then learn is to put our faith and trust in what Jesus did. When you do that, you then pull yourself out of the equation and understand that God has already, through Jesus Christ, paid for whatever it was in my past. I'm living in my now. And I'm going to get what God has for me. He says, I'm about to do something new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? Do you know what he just did? Do you know what Isaiah just did? Isaiah just said the appointed time is now. The appointed time is now. I don't know whose word this is. But you've been getting more and more and more uncomfortable. You've been getting uncomfortable. And I don't mean uncomfortable with your living arrangements. I don't mean uncomfortable with your job. I mean uncomfortable with almost everything. And it ain't even that stuff is wrong or that you that you uh, uh, don't appreciate. It's just that something in you knows that something else is supposed to happen. Something in you just knows something else is supposed to be happening right now. I'm going to tell you what I had to do. I had to make a very difficult decision recently. There are some people who I want God to do some phenomenal things for. I want him to bless them. I want him to open some doors. I want him to do some phenomenal things. What I recognized also is that for some of those people to get what it is God has for them, I had to press into a different place. I had to press into a different place. I had to put myself in a different position. See, some people, when, when, when God wants to do something great for them, they can lean on you and get it. Well, there are other people, when God wants to do something great for them, he wants them to stand on their own. And if you're not careful, you'll feel abandoned at the moment that God is saying, no, I need you to stand. Yeah, you, 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 you'll have all your energy focused on who's not around and who didn't check on you and, and who didn't love you through it. And they walked away when I was in the storm of my life. You got to be careful because people who know what God is saying about you understand that sometimes it's the crutch that keeps you crippled. Some of you all, you ain't crippled. You just like the crutch. You like having somebody who's right there because you're afraid to walk out on your own. I'm here to tell you that God is trying to interrupt all of that. He doesn't want you leaning on somebody who's not there for that purpose. He wants you to stand fully erect in the moment that he's called you to, and that moment is now. It's now. That's why you are so dissatisfied with everything. That's why everything is sort of, sort of getting on your nerves a little bit, just a little bit. I'm tired of these people. I'm tired of this job, tired of this relationship, tired of this church, tired, 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 tired. All of those things are because God is preparing you for the interruption. You got to find a way to get in the now, get in this very moment. Listen, sir, ma'am, get in this very moment that we're in now. What God is doing, he's doing it now. He's doing it suddenly. He's doing it immediately. You can't get it if you're stuck in yesterday. You can't get it if you're looking forward to tomorrow. Immediately can't happen yesterday or tomorrow. It has to happen 
now. So when you get in the right space, in the right mindset, the Bible says that on the day of Pentecost, when they were all in one place and on one accord, then suddenly, when you get in the right space, right mental space, when your heart is in the right space, you'll see that it's now. You'll see that God is trying to do something for you right now. I'm going to tell you this, and I believe this with all my heart because it happened in the Bible. The children of Israel walked around there now for 40 years. They walked, they were right at there now, but kept walking right past it. Kept walking right past it for 40 years. They missed now. I believe it's Deuteronomy. Let me read this scripture to you real quickly. And then we're going to pray and let you all go today. Listen to this. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter two, verse one. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me. And we compassed, that means going around, we compassed Mount Seir many days, many days, many days. How many days have you woken up and was talking about yesterday, last month, last year? Remember, remember when we used to, I remember when the relationship was, I remember when the church was, I remember when my finances was, you just go around the circle every day. And the Bible says in verse number two, the Lord spake unto me saying, ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn. Turn you northward. You've been rehearsing how bad it's been long enough. You've been rehearsing what's missing long enough. You've been talking about if, if, if long enough. Change the direction of your language. Change the direction of your feet. Change the posture of your faith. Change. Change. Listen. I want to tell you this. This is something that I believe the Lord is going to make more and more clear to us as the days go. When we move, he's going to move. Now, I, I can show you that in scripture. I just don't want to get into a whole nother level of teaching today. But when we move, we're going to see that was his move. Some of you all waiting on God to do something and God is saying, well, when you do something, I'm going to do what you do. Remember with Moses, when Moses, they all got to the Red Sea. And they was crying out to Moses and Moses cried out to God. And God said, what you crying out to me for? What do you have in your hand? Use what I gave you. When you take the responsibility to get in now, Lord, I understand that faith, my faith is, is believing that something great is going to happen. I got that in faith. But I want to stay in this moment because that thing could be happening right now and I'm missing it. Because I'm rehearsing the negative or trying to look past where I am to find something else when maybe what I need is right here. May God just let this word sink deep, deep, deep into your hearts. Um, there is something so powerful going on around us, you all. It is. It is. And I've been doing everything in my power to stay in this moment because I want to glean from it. I want to use what's happening right now to do something great for the balance of my life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the divine interruption that you are making out of us. You're making us something great but you want us to do something in the moment that we're in. Lord, there are people who are listening, whether live or in replay, who have had so much trauma, real things that have happened to them. They cannot just dismiss it. They've tried. Some have been in counseling. Some have been in uh, prayer and fasting, and yet they are stuck. 
I'm asking you now, Father, to teach them how to exercise the authority of pulling down thoughts and making those thoughts subject to the knowledge of Christ that's in them. Father, I pray that your love would overwhelm us so that we would know that no matter what it was, you loved us through it. You loved us through the good. You loved us through the bad. And Lord, I thank you that now you have us in a now. Help us to stay present. Help us to be alert. Father, there are business owners who are listening to me right now. The money that they need is on that is in their exact circle. It's right where they are, but they aren't alert. They aren't present because they're planning for the future. I pray God now in Jesus name that you would allow them to see how to get their hands on it now. Father, there are pastors, leaders who are watching, who also need doors to come open. Father, I thank you that they are in the right space right now for it to happen. Help them to get over. Maybe they lost the church. Maybe they lost members. Maybe somebody's talking about them in the city that they live in. Whatever it is, turn it around for them. Turn it in their favor. Father, I thank you that you're doing things in our relationships with our children. You're doing things that matter. Things that we need, things that are necessary. We thank you for them in the holy and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Listen, those of you who need prayer, special prayer, um, I want you to send us your prayer request via email. Um, also, please, if you have not yet subscribed um, to our YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, the subscription doesn't mean that you have to watch us over there, but the subscription does help us to reach more people through that um, format or forum. So please subscribe if you can to our YouTube channel so that we can um, begin to, YouTube will actually pay us to be on YouTube uh, if we have enough subscribers. So that's another way for us to have finances come into our ministry. So please, if you can subscribe, it'd be great if we have 500 more subscribers in the next 30 days. That would be so wonderful and a blessing. So I appreciate those of you who are going to do that. Also, I want to give each of you all the opportunity to sow into our ministry. Now, I want to, I want to pause for a moment though. Um, those of you who want to uh, give specifically to me for my birthday, this is going to be probably one of the rare times that um, I'm going to ask for myself. And I'm not really asking. Um, just want to give you the opportunity. So many, so many of you have already expressed love and I appreciate it. But if you want to sow a seed, if you want to do something for my birthday, and I want you to hear me and hear me clearly, if you send something for me for my birthday, that's where it's going to go. Okay. Uh, it, it's not, I'm not going to bless nobody. I'm not going to help nobody. I'm going to do something for me. Uh, I'm going to buy something to put on. I'm going to do something because I, I believe that that you should do, the, the, the seed should be earmarked. So uh, any of those of you who want to give, thank you so much in advance uh, for doing so. Uh, I love you all. I appreciate you. Please, again, all of, all of our minister partners, ministry partners, thank you. If you want to partner with us and you have not, there is no amount that require, is required for you to be a partner. We just like it to be a monthly gift. It doesn't have to come on a specific day, but we just like it to be a monthly gift. And that helps us stay effective and do what we are trying to do for the kingdom. So uh, email us for prayer. Sow seed if you, if you would like. Also, you can sow seed via Zelle by using my email address. I'm thanking you in advance for those of you who are sending a birthday blessing or greeting. May God bless you 
is my prayer. I love you guys. Uh, have a fantastic balance of the week and weekend. And I look forward to communicating with you all again very soon. All right. Have an incredible day. Bye.